dismember and you're decapitated. It probably says you're trying to hide something and make sure certain details don't come out. Sense of Life with Annie Elise starts right now. Hey, everybody. Sorry, I was trying to get everything hooked up over here on my end. Can you just let me know if you guys can hear me okay in the chat? I tried to kill the echo on my end as much as possible, so I'm hoping that you guys can still hear me. Let me just plug this in. Great. Okay, audio is good. Perfect. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to be on here very long after the press conference because I have an obligation that I have to get to, which is why I wanted to jump on here a little bit earlier because I wanted to just kind of talk through the things that we've learned overnight. I want to play a few um, videos for you. I want to show some screenshots to you. And then after the press conference, depending on how long it lasts, I will be able to stay on for a little bit and chat with you guys. But either way, what I'm planning to do is this afternoon, get once I'm back at my desk, put together more of a detailed video with everything that we know, um, including all the videos, the screenshots, all of that, so that it can be in one singular place to digest all of the information because a lot of the feedback that I get from you guys is that sometimes these live streams that carry on even for 90 minutes, which doesn't seem like a really long time, sometimes it's still too much to consume. So I'm going to come back with you know a very tight abbreviated video for you that hopefully will be up by tonight where you can come back for like the full updates if you want to really know the whole deep dive on the case. But for now, I want to just kind of talk through what we've learned overnight, share the video with you. We're going to watch the press conference together and just discuss with each other. I put slow mode on um, just because I want to make sure that, you know, the chat is going to probably move pretty quickly. But if there are any sort of, you know, trolls or anything like that, please let me know so then I can put subscribers only mode on so we can help mitigate some of that. So what I want to start by doing is playing a video for you. Some of you may have seen it, some may not have, but Diana, Quentin's babysitter, did another live stream last night. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play this for you. And it's a quick little watch. There's um, too many people asking me about where Leilani is, and I'm outside of my house. I heard the cops were coming for her, so we've been out here waiting. It's raining. Um, she was in the road. There was a lot of commotion, and... Then everything just went dark, so I don't know where she is right now. I don't see any cars. I can turn the camera around. There's no cars. If you look right there where that car is going past, that's her house. It's totally dark. It's totally dark. I've had so many messages at one time asking, have I seen Leilani just in the last hour, 45 minutes? I, I did see her. I was at the truck, me and my girls outside, and we seen her in the road, and they were cussing, and she was trying to leave, and then a vehicle had pulled in, and she went back towards the house. So I don't know where she is right now. I want to see her arrested. Um, and the reason I came live is because everybody is asking me all these questions and I cannot answer all these questions. So I just came on, but I can go out here. I mean, it's raining. It's raining really hard. Um, but I can show you where the house is. And she was out here. 
Um, ooh, it's lightning. It's raining and lightning out here. Let's see. Let me turn it around. It's dark on the road. They turned all the lights off. But they were on the road arguing. And we seen Leilani, but she just disappeared. So I don't know where they're at now. But this is this is what we're doing. But I just wanted to let y'all see because I've had so many questions and messages. Couldn't just answer them all. Um, but yeah, that is what's going on. That's all I know. I know that they put on that the FBI and cops were coming to get her. But I don't know. Um, we can believe it. Quentin is gone. But it's um not the outcome we wanted. But I'm gonna go now. Hi guys, sorry, you thought I would have figured that out by now. Um, you didn't miss much. So what I was just saying is that Diana, since the beginning of this, had been getting quite a bit of heat and mixed opinions, mostly positive, but she was getting quite a bit of blowback because people were saying, why didn't you call DCF, all of these things, which she did state that there was an open case and she had made her concerns aware, uh, made them aware of her concerns, as did several other neighbors. Now, she hasn't shared those receipts, and I suspect that's because it needs to be confidential. It's, you know, a case file, it's minors, but she says that she and some of the neighbors did raise their concerns. Now, to me, she appears to be the only one who ever gave a damn about Quentin, honestly, and it's just absolutely horrible that this is now where we're at with the outcome. And I want to talk a little bit about what happened last night. So there's another creator, and I believe her channel is called Darkness Exposed, and she was going over this case, and she had been in touch with Billy Joe, the grandmother. And they had been exchanging messages on Facebook, and then Billy Joe had messaged her. And I actually, let me, I'm sure you guys have seen it by now, but let me go ahead and pull up the screenshot here. But she basically says, Quentin has passed, he's in a landfill, and my daughter had, done, had did it. She has no memory of it. Now, she sent this message before law enforcement ever confirmed anything, before anybody, any news stations on Twitter, nobody had heard anything. And apparently, as far as what I have seen and now what I know to be true, they weren't planning on announcing it until the press conference today. That was already scheduled. And she went out and went ahead and said something, which whatever she's, you know, whether she's in the wrong, the right of this entire horrific murder, she's family. So I suppose if she wanted to release it, it's up to her. I don't know. As as long as it, I don't know. I, I don't know. I need to really think that through. But anyways, she announces this. And then of course, you know how it goes. It spreads like wildfire. And there was another text. I don't know if I have it on here. Let me see. Is this the one? Yeah, this is Leilani's brother. And he also is saying that he has been found, but don't say anything till it's released. This is a conversation that he had with somebody else that was released and was sent to me. And this person also had sent me, you know, 
threads of earlier text messages over the last week that she was having with Leilani's brother in which he was saying, the FBI is telling us to play nice with my sister so that she'll say something to us. We, I hate her. She's scum. Like apparently there was no love lost between the two of them. So anyways, this information starts leaking last night before law enforcement says anything. And so people are wondering, is it true? These accounts are real, but like, is this the reality? What's really going on now? Before we keep going, I want to just pull this message up one more time. This is the very first message that we, out of all of the screenshots we have now, the very first one to where it can be tracked back to when Billy Joe first tells somebody Quinn has passed. Look, I'm not trying, let me come over on this side. Hi. I'm not trying to be nitpicky here, but if you're announcing your grandson's death or any family member's death, to me at least, first of all, this is done with zero tact, but also the crying emojis, and I might just be bent out of shape over this, but it really bothers me. It just like the emojis feel disingenuine. The, like after saying he has passed with all these crying faces, like I don't know. It doesn't feel real to me. And again, I could be overanalyzing it. So tell me what you guys think in the chat. But that really rubbed me the wrong way. So that coupled with the fact that she released this information that law enforcement hadn't released yet, and I would suspect they had advised her not to tell anybody, it just felt very odd, almost like she was trying to get in front of it, which then we see that she continues to say that Leilani did it, her daughter, but has no memory of it. So then I was like, okay, she really is trying to get in front of this. And they're going to most likely, in my opinion, go for the insanity plea. And it just felt really weird. So as everybody's spreading this like wildfire, people are sending the screenshot to Billy Joe saying, hey, this is going around. Was this really you? Did you really say this? And sure enough, here you can see on many threads, she says, yes, they just haven't recovered his body yet, confirming to all of these people that yes, in fact, this is true, even though the information still had not been made public at this point. Of course, then not long after, the police department catches wind of it, and then boom, they make their announcement. And they say in here that they have named his mother, Leilani, as the prime suspect, but no arrests have been made and no charges have been filed. So to me, there's a lot of questions of did if she didn't remember it, which I don't believe for a split second, because if she didn't remember it, how would they have known to send the 529 AM text? Like, none of it makes sense. I think it's obviously teeing up to have an insanity defense. But if she, if people are asking, did she confess? And that's why they know where he is, but they haven't found him yet. I don't believe that's the case because I think they would have arrested her and charges would have been brought by now, which they clearly said they hadn't. Now, I don't know if they arrested her last night. It appears that maybe something did go down in front of the house. The last time we saw her was yesterday morning when she was getting into that truck and driving away. And I believe her boyfriend at this entire time has been in Atlanta with his friends. And to my knowledge, from what I have heard from his friends and seen on social media, he apparently thinks Leilani is capable of something like this and wanted nothing to do with her. So I don't know his level of involvement. I know he's the one who sent that text at 529. He said he saw Quentin at six. Part of me wonders, and I'm sure we'll get more answers today, if maybe he really did see him at 6 a.m. in that playpen and thought he was sleeping, and perhaps he already was deceased at that point. And maybe Leilani had woken up and said, hey, he's sleeping. I'm going to watch him today. Just text the babysitter. Because again, a lot of friends have said, that Daniel is the one who always made the arrangements with the babysitter and really cared for those kids. I don't, again, I don't know what the truth is. So we'll find all of that out. But I think that this insanity defense and that she has no memory of it is bullshit, to be quite honest. And I assure, I definitely think that she had to have had some memory of it because this had to have happened from the night before at 6 p.m. when they picked the boys up from the babysitter's house until that early morning hour. I don't think that she did something after the sighting at 6 a.m. because that's such a finite window of time for her to murder him, dispose of his body while her other two kids are in the house, take his body far enough away unless she put it in the garbage can for it to be disposed of because the rumor was and a family member had said that she intentionally did not call police and report him as missing until the garbage was collected that morning. And now that we know he's in a landfill, a whole nother week has passed. So there's an entire new dumping on top of that, making it, I would imagine, pretty challenging to find his remains, especially because he is so small as well. Um, 
Let me pause really quick here. And first of all, thank you, Katrina, for the super chat. The grandma and grandpa were on the news the day after, and they were speaking of Simon in past tense. How suspicious. I. It's always a red flag to me when somebody speaks in past tense about somebody. However, I know the babysitter was too, and I think that it could be chalked up to just in that moment while you're talking, saying like, he loved this instead of he loves this. So I, I try not to put too much stock into that, but it very well could have meant something. I'm not sure. We know that the the grandmother also had said, you know, Leilani is a liar. She can't be trusted. She does a lot of shady stuff. And I think that this is just one more example of her being a natural born liar by her saying she has no memory or recollection of it because something had to have happened within, in my opinion, that 12 hour window, even tighter than 12 hours from 6 PM the night before until that text message probably was sent at 529. So and some people are saying because she had a wisdom tooth pulled that day or something that she was on medication and that's why she doesn't remember. No. I've had all four of my wisdom teeth pulled. I have fake teeth all over my mouth from my car accident. I have been on the medication of medications. That medication is not still, you know, hurting, like not hurting you, but like what, what impairing you throughout the middle of the night so much so that you are going to commit a murder against your child and not remember it. So I don't buy that for a second. A lot of other people are also suggesting that she might use the postpartum defense since she has a five-month-old daughter. Um, thank you, Paola, for the super sticker. and I appreciate it. If this bitch <laughs> tries to use postpartum, and I'm sorry, I'm going to just kind of unleash here for a minute, I will lose my mind. And I talked a little bit about this in my Discord with, um, you know, the 10 to Life crew in there last night. Many of you who have been on my channel for a long time know that I struggled severely with postpartum fortunately got myself out of it. And I had a very, you know, close experience with a friend of ours who suffered from postpartum psychosis. She ended up going missing. We all went searching for her. And not long after she ended up taking her own life over it because it was that bad. So I know the inner workings and I know that it is possible. I'm not saying that people don't commit murder through postpartum. Certainly we've seen that happen. I think it was what Angela Bates or whatever. She did that to somebody. I don't believe, though, that that is a factor here with this girl, especially based on her track record. So if she tries to use that as her defense, I will just lose my mind. But by the grandmother already planting the seed, saying she has no memory of it, she has no recollection of it, I think that they are trying to tee up that insanity defense. Somebody else had mentioned something about the polygraphs, that the boyfriend and her took a polygraph, that he apparently passed with flying colors, and that she also passed, which proves that she had no memory of it. First of all, polygraphs are not admissible in court. Good thing. But also, it doesn't mean jack shit. So if she's trying to say, oh, I passed it, that must mean that I don't have memory of it. I, sorry, that's not going to hold up in court. No, no, no. So kind of back to what I was saying at the beginning. And I, again, I apologize. I've kind of been all over the place. That's why I'm going to do a follow-up video where it's a little bit more organized. But police now believing that he is deceased and in a landfill. I don't believe she confessed because I think that the char charges would have happened and an arrest would have happened at that point as soon as they learned that information, which it hadn't yet at this point, according to what they had published on their Twitter. So I believe that they probably found something on her tech because we know they seized their tech devices. They, of course, drained the pool for forensic evidence, all of these things. So it's my belief that they probably found something implicating her in that. But then because they don't have the proof yet or they don't have the body yet because they don't have a confession yet or anything like that, they may not be able to directly charge her yet because they want to make sure that when they do charge her, it'll stick and they can prosecute. But I'm, again, I'm confident we will learn more about that in today's press conference. So let me see here there what else I wanted to show you guys while we wait and let me go to the comments here because I know we're going to get started in here in about 10 minutes. I think that she might have been arrested last night according to Diana's new Facebook live. She said that there was some commotion out front then it went dark. I also would imagine that had she not been arrested yet there would be news vans camped out everywhere waiting for that moment, but it didn't look like there were any on the street. Again, who knows? But I would, I'm sure she was, I would imagine she's arrested. I just am curious to know how they learned the information. Going back to the boyfriend a little bit quickly here too. 
again, I don't know his level of involvement or uninvolvement just based on what I've been seeing and reading, which we all know who knows what the truth is there, right? So he apparently went to Atlanta shortly after this entire thing started, which I would imagine that if he was involved and if they were like this so much so that they murdered and are covering it up together, I can't imagine that he would leave her high and dry in the dust and go off with his friends. I think it's more likely that he'd be like, yo, I know you're crazy. I know you're capable of this stuff. We've been through some shit in the past. Like, I'm out of here. Like, I don't want anything to do with you. And that could be why. Because he also seen then was like playing video. There were videos of him playing video games. There were videos of him playing pool at a pool hall or a bar, like almost kind of carefree, which yeah, is a little gross if he truly did care about these kids, but also to up and leave your five-month-old daughter and your girlfriend if you were involved and pass to polygraph again, not that Polly's say anything. I don't really know. I don't really know um, if he's involved or not. And I think that the police would have said something to that as well and said persons of interest or suspects plural, but they said our prime suspect is Leilani. Oh, some of you guys are saying that he and his parents are trying to get custody of the baby. Great. Now, part of me wonders too, and I don't know the inner workings of the law, but I don't know legally what Billy Joe can be held responsible with if it would be neglect or, you know, manslaughter due to a manslaughter charge because of neglect. Because since technically he, Quentin was in her legal custody and she left him with Leilani who lost custody, I don't know what kind of repercussions you have for that. If it's a slap on the wrist charge or if there is, you know, a death, if that becomes more serious. So I'm sure we will learn more with that too. But that could also be why Billy Joe is getting on the defense saying she has no memory of it, this and that, almost trying to absolve herself of like, I didn't leave him with somebody who was intentionally trying to kill him or intentionally had plans to murder him. She doesn't even remember it was a psychotic break. So I don't know if maybe she's trying to absolve herself a little bit there. It's unclear. I did a deep dive on everybody's TikTok who's involved in this. And some of the videos are unsettling, not alarming, but a little unsettling, especially when they talk candidly and openly about their family drama. So it's hard for me to play those on here. But again, I will embed those in the video I post either later today or tomorrow morning. But um, there's just something that's not sitting right with me on this entire thing. Uh, Stephanie Hall, thank you for the super chat. Wanted to say that you're a gem for all the hard work you do. It's so sad with the cases of murdered children at the hands of their parents. Has it always been like this or are we just more aware? Unfortunately, it's always been like this, but my belief is not to this degree. I think we definitely saw a spike in this mid-pandemic and post-pandemic when kids were at home more, when parents you know, un had more responsibility and were more hands-on. But I think, too, in situations like this, when somebody is proven to not be an, a fit parent, honestly, there needs to be some sort of rule in place that you can't reproduce anymore. Sorry, I'm not trying to get like handmaid's tail on you or anything here. But like, if there is proof that you are unfit or that you have hurt somebody in the past or that you have a, like, you know, these crazy issues, like there needs to be a rule. I don't know how to do that. But like, I'm so sick of this. I am so sick of hearing this. So let's see. Um, it also could mean, too, I'm just going back to this really quick. So Tiffany's saying, question, could they not use those texts as a confession? Depending what the context was of the text, it would depend. But if the boyfriend split because he was like, yo, you're batshit. I'm out of here. Like, I'm not, I don't want any ties to you. Maybe there was a text message of her being like, come back. Like, I don't even remember anything or like, this isn't the truth. But Early on, when we started talking about this, there was the family member who came out and said she waited to call the police until the trash was picked up. So maybe that was the confession or that was the comment that, you know, has tipped police off to knowing where his remains are, but still ha have not recovered him. And maybe they don't have enough, again, concrete proof to make the arrest. I'm unsure. So let me see. Yeah, that's a great possibility, Shell, that they found evidence of her going to the dump area. But I don't think she necessarily went to the dump area herself. So remember, that morning she had her other two kids at home. And surely she could have either – she's a horrible parent, obviously. She could have left them behind or packed them up in the car with her. But I think the whole intention was of waiting to call it in was because she 
probably put him in the garbage can and waited for the trash to come and get collected. The trash, the big truck leave, and then she called it in. So she wouldn't have driven anywhere, but maybe she had GPS. I don't know. I'm going to just go to some of these feeds really quick, and um, I'm sure they haven't started it yet, but I still want to just um, see if anybody has started queuing it up. And if you guys see it ahead of me, please let me know. But I have all the different tabs open, so we're going to catch it wherever it's at. Let's see. I agree, Kelsey. Harmony as well. It's just, there's too many of these. Annie, first of all, love your name. Second of all, thank you for the super chat. But if the boyfriend left his baby girl with her, that seems like he is not much better than the mom. Certainly. Certainly true, especially if you're suspecting her of doing something and you're then willingly leaving her. So a lot of people also had mentioned the idea, and I had mentioned this as well, um, it, just in my our Discord chats, that this might have been a retaliation against Billy Joe because we know that there was no love lost between Leilani and Billy Joe, especially as of late. I don't think it was necessarily because she was ordered to pay child support because I think then she would have done this to other children as well. But she knew that Billy Joe loved him. She had custody of him. And maybe this was something to retaliate against her to break her heart. The family has stated she's a liar. They don't trust her. She does horrible things. The brother and all those screenshots, well, which I'll share on this next video, says that he she's scum. He hates her. He wants nothing to do with her. The FBI is just asking that they play nice. So like her own family knows that she's a garbage human being. I don't know. So maybe she was trying to hurt them. It's it's unreal. Let me go back over here, guys. Sorry, I just want to keep checking back a bit here to see if we where when they're going to start it and when they're going to catch it. WCJL, I think, has it. Let's see. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Oh my God, I hate this computer. It's going so slow. I'm so sorry, guys.
Okay, so they haven't started yet. Man, you guys are wild. I saw the chat lighting up. It started, it started, go to it. They haven't started talking yet, guys. <laughs> they haven't started talking yet. God, you guys are killing me. I'm like pulling up everything. Nobody's talking yet, guys. And nobody's talking. I got it. I got it. There's no sound because nobody's talking, guys. Oh, man. Here we go. You ready? Yeah? All right, good afternoon. I'm Chatham County Police Chief Jeff Hadley. I'm joined today by FBI Supervisory Senior Resident Agent Will Clark of the Savannah FBI Office. As you know, our investigation over the last eight days has led us to the heartbreaking conclusion that 20-month-old 20 Quentin Simon is deceased. We have named his mother, Lalani Simon, as the primary suspect in Quentin's disappearance and death. We have not made an arrest or filed any charges at this time. From the moment we received the 911 call reporting Quentin missing, we have conducted an exhaustive search for him. Sadly, we still have not found Quentin. But our search and our investigation will continue, and it will continue with every available resource we have in order to give Quentin's family closure and see that justice is served in this case. I would like to thank the FBI for their invaluable expertise and assistance during our search and for the help they will continue to provide moving forward. We know that millions of people fell in love with Quentin Simon the moment they saw his face and learned of his disappearance. We have seen the outpouring of love and concern for this child and the outpouring of grief at the latest developments in this case. The men and women of the Chatham County Police Department share that same sadness, but we also feel very determined to keep working as hard as we can and for as long as we have to, to find Quinn. Now Special Agent Clark will have some comments and then I'll return uh, with some closing statements. Good afternoon. My name is Will Clark. I'm the Senior Supervisory resident agent in charge of the FBI's Savannah and Brunswick offices. From the moment the FBI became involved in this investigation, our primary goal was to assist the Chatham County Police Department in bringing Quentin home and holding anyone responsible for his disappearance accountable. <clears throat> to the Chatham County community, our heart breaks along with yours in trying to comprehend what we believe happened here. The FBI, along with our law enforcement partners, have followed every lead, every tip, and every piece of evidence to get to this point, and we will continue to do so. The FBI entered this case less than three hours. The card. And in closing, I know everyone has a lot of questions. I'll answer what I can. Um, but remember, our focus must be on not doing anything that jeopardizes the integrity of this investigation 
or bringing justice for Quentin. So with that said, I'll be happy to answer what questions I can. Did you hear from the, land, from the family last night that you might be part of a land deal? Can you tell us about that and what that deal might be? I cannot uh, disclose any inf information relative to that. We will follow the evidence. Uh, and when our evidence leads us uh, to search any anything specifically or any specific geographic area, we will communicate that to you at that time. I cannot get into any specifics relative to evidence. What I can what I can say is the evidence that we have so far, um, based on uh, multiple search warrants and interviews, has led us to the conclusion that Quentin is deceased. Um, the investigation doesn't end, you know, right there. We will continue to investigate this until its final conclusion. Because the I'm sorry, sir, because the evidence has led us to that point and to this point today. Why not let us do that? Because we will only do that when we feel we have everything that we need to. We only get one shot at this, right? We're going to do it right. We're going to do the best that we can. We're going to use the resources at our disposal. Um, we're thankful to the FBI. And when we get to that point and we feel comfortable um, with, in counsel with the FBI and the ADA, uh, that's when we will... Uh, reach that conclusion. Is anyone else being considered for criminal charges? Um, at this time, no. What do you think the effect on what evidence? The evidence in the case has led us to this conclusion. Was there a date where you found evidence that led you to the conclusion you're about to make a preliminary conclusion and that's when you said you were going to get some evidence? The, the accumulation of evidence over these last eight days has led us to this conclusion today. We do not have uh, any specifics at this time. I will not, I can't answer that question um, with any level of specificity. Do you know where Leilani's other two kids are lying? I can't answer that question. Do you know where Leilani is? I don't know where she is currently today. Is there any chance anyone else besides Leilani could be involved? There is no one else a suspect at this time. Leilani is the main focus of this investigation. Are you not concerned that he's now named the number one suspect out of thousands of others? Is there not a security team that could take off? Um, I can't get into any specifics, but we don't believe she's a flight risk at this time. All right. Thank you. Appreciate your questions. Have a great day. Okay. God, these towns, man, need to get their tech together. It's I had like five different news channels going and they all kept freezing. Um, okay, so let me just recap for you really quick. Kind of a nothing burger, but still. Leilani is the prime suspect. They do not believe they have any other suspects at this time. They don't know where Leilani is at this moment, but they didn't indicate that she fled and they don't believe that she is a flight risk, which makes me further think that she is going to lean on this insanity defense. Um, they have not found Quentin. They believe he is in the landfill, but they don't have any specific location. So, And they said that the evidence that they have collected over the last eight days is what led them to this conclusion that he is deceased and that Leilani is the prime suspect. So again, I would imagine that that information came either through the tech, maybe conversations with the boyfriend because they have said he's not a suspect now. But they also are saying that there's nobody else who's a suspect or anybody else who they believe has been involved. They haven't charged her and they haven't arrested her because they haven't recovered his remains yet. And that we see that a lot in cases because he mentioned it too. They get one shot at this. You hit, When you arrest them, you got to make it stick and you have to have enough to prosecute without a body, without a confession, without evidence that this was premeditated. You can't do that. Your hands are tied. And I mean, think of even the Scott Peterson case that went on for months and months and months. And like he to the point where he didn't even think he was a suspect until he like ran. But it's because they were trying to gather as all the information they needed and all the evidence they needed to make it stick. So regardless where you sit on this Scott Peterson case, because I know a lot of people think he's innocent, but whatever. We're not talking about that today. And so no charges for that. 
no charges for murder and she hasn't been arrested. I do think it's interesting that he says they don't know where she is at this moment and that they also can't say where the two kids are. I think it's probably only a matter of time before the grandma speaks out because she, we know she's got loose lips and she'll probably say where she is. But I also am kind of worried, like, what if when we saw her get into that truck in that video yesterday, what if she did hightail it out of town? Look, I hate comparing these cases because I feel like everybody does it. Everybody always compares either to the Gabby Petito case or the Watts case. But I'm just hopeful that this isn't another Brian Laundry situation where she's, you know, on the lam and we and poor little Quentin doesn't get justice. So we'll see because and one of the reporters even said they're like, don't you think that it's a risk now that you've named and identified the suspect and there's no charges? And they said, we don't believe she's a flight risk. Who knows what that means? I don't, I don't know. But they believe that she, you know, is the one responsible. Now, it could even be, even if they think she is responsible and they have certain evidence, it could just be circumstantial at this point, which is why they have not filed charges. Maybe the boyfriend told them something. Maybe the cousin who talked about the landfill told them something. But maybe they don't have any concrete proof yet as to anything except for what the people are saying. But, you know, unless it's a confession or unless it's direct evidence and you have the body and you have proof of that and you have cause of death and you have all of these things, then, you know, there there's not much you can do. Let's see. Tennessee is saying that's why they don't believe that she is a flight risk. They know she is where, oh, they know where she is if they tell people anyone who lives there is they, oh, that makes sense. Um, She could flee because of risk to her, which, yeah, hopefully people aren't camped out. I know some creators are camped out there and making a stink, but hopefully they don't jeopardize this. Patrick and Swayze, cute. I don't understand why mom was alone with a child that was removed from her. The department should have never allowed the mother to live in the house where the children are sheltered. It's very possible that they didn't know she was living there. You know, it's absolutely possible, but I agree. It was a very negligent decision for Billy Joe to go out of town and let Leilani watch those children. And look what happened. Look what happened. I know it, it was kind of a big nothing burger. So as I mentioned at the top of this video, which now I guess will even be better since that wasn't a lot of information, I'm going to come back this afternoon and I'm going to just streamline everything and I'm going to put all of the pictures in there that I was talking about, the screenshots, the videos, the full timeline that we had, like everything that we know so that there's one place to digest it so that you don't have to just, you know, hop from live stream to live stream hoping to find information and piece it together and spend you know, seven hours out of your day looking for it. So I'll have that up hopefully by tonight or early tomorrow morning for you. So make sure that you check back. Otherwise, all we can do is just continue to hope and pray that they get the evidence they need, that they find his remains in the landfill. I would imagine too that when they drained the pool and searched the property, I can't imagine they found much because if they did, I think that would be enough evidence to make an arrest or charge her formally, but who knows? It sounded more like they learned through conversation with the family members, which, again, is probably not enough evidence to hold up in court, especially if they can't recover his remains and figure out cause of death and all of these things. Technically, he's still missing at this point, technically, even though they do believe he's deceased. So we'll see. Shidran, thank you so much for the super chat. That poor sweet boy, he deserved better. 100%. 100%. I mean, they have moved pretty quickly on this case. I will give them that. So I would imagine that we are going to see some arrests, some action in the very near future. We're just going to have to wait and be patient. It seems like they're, thank you, Ashley. It seems like they only are doing press conferences once a week. So I don't know that we necessarily will get anything. I would say maybe early next week at the soonest, but who knows? Again, if Billy Joe starts talking, it's almost going to kind of force law enforcement's hand to start speaking and sharing to conform or to, you know, debunk certain things that are being said. So I think we just have to kind of 
wait and watch. So I'll let you guys know as soon as we know more. I think in the meantime, we just have to keep hoping for the best and hoping that he is found and that she can be held responsible and she doesn't use this insanity plea and no memory of it defense, which I think is complete bullshit, to be honest, and pisses me off. So thank you guys for tuning in. I apologize for all the tech if snafus, although for once it wasn't my fault. Um, and I will keep you guys updated. All right. Thanks again, guys. And until the next one, stay safe. Bye.